Yo, main mak main tinggal ramai ramai tin, pulau angin mera, pukul pandial, tak pulung, ada tangan gatur, ada tu taruh kurupan, kau kau yang berbalik balik nak kunci mur, yo lomo, pak pulau malam ini mungkin ada dia, yo lomo, yo thank you very much to, ah, um. People organizing this event, a uh, speech, Nakon IP Ullman, Mati, Kalaroy, Kamala, Makarnawi, Nakon Bukulong, Ramyong, and Yolan Yali, Limbertuang, Dial Garma, or Wanga, Napagolang. Yo, good morning, Bookmark, Ka Kololo, to your own country. Welcome to Yolmo country. My name is Yingi Aguyola. I am a Liadaling Mirman of the Jambar Pungo clan of the Yolmo nation. My message today is clear. Our progress must come faster. And when I say progress, I mean a Yolmo vision of our communities and our way of life. And this will only happen when we have control of our future and our law, law and culture are recognized. We are a sovereign people. We never ceded our land. We are not conquered and here we stand. Our Yolngo governance systems remain. We have clan elders, clan leaders, and ceremonies that allow clans to educate, reach agreements, create change, settle disputes, and govern our communities. When CDP program came in, I looked around and saw community leaders painting rocks for their occupation, for their jobs, for the council. The Balanda system does not recognize our leaders. You see, our clan leaders, men and women, are managers of their clans, and they, like CEOs, they are like CEOs, rather, of corporations. They have the highest level of education within their clan about country kinship law. They hold the knowledge for a culture that is more than 60,000 years old. This is a, their PhD. And this is the knowledge that they pass on to the children and the community. This vision of leaders painting does not add up in Yolong Rome. These are our leaders, but their worth is not seen by Balanda systems and it is not understood. When governments engage with communities, it is the clans that must be engaged with our governance systems must be recognized and, and traditional decision making must be at the heart of the engagement. There is a lot of talks at the, at the moment about a voice in the Australian Parliament. I wonder what that will mean. Let me tell you about my experiences as an elected voice in the Parliament. I am a member of the Northern Territory Parliament, an independent member, not aligned with either parties. I was pre-selected by the Yolngu Nations Assembly, a body not created by anybody else, but one that grew out of the system of Yolngu law and governance. I was then 
voted in by my people. The message should be, the message should have been clear. I was elected to represent my people. I was their voice, and that was important. I am the first independent member for Nolanboy, and I am the first Yolngo member for Nolanboy. All of the good, good words and good actions should have meant that I, I was treated with respect, and my people should have been knocking, knocking on my door to work with them. Instead, I find out about laws to be passed in, in the Northern Territory Parliament after they have already been drafted. I am briefed on policies that will be implemented or have already been implemented. I am, inst I am listened to politely by ministers and their advisors during meetings only for my words to have little effect on things that have already been decided long before talking to me. I was not invited to the anti-treaty meetings or included in the anti-treaty working groups. When all Aboriginal members of the parliament were included in a committee for Aboriginal Affairs, I was told no. That is only for the government members. But then they invited Aboriginal leaders across the entity. In my own election, organizations have told me they worry if they, if they are working with me. They, they may be reprimanded and, and lost and lose their anti-government funding. I had a fight. I had to fight hard just to be able to use my own language in the parliament and to have an interpreter here with me to use my language equally. I had to fight and am still fighting to have my voice heard, to bring the voice of my people to the parliament. Before this event, my office wrote to the leader of the opposition and to the Minister for Indigenous Australians, and I asked them for a meeting while they were here. Both of their offices wrote back to me to say they were too busy to meet with me. I say this is, I say this respectfully. I am a member of the parliament. I, uh, I understand how busy schedules can be, can get to, get for a member and for a minister. And I know they are only here for a short time and I hope we may meet in the future. But I am a Yolngo member of the parliament and I am also a Jirikaimir. Arnhem Land is my country. I am a senior elder, a songman. I speak for my people. My voice should count. I should be heard and I should be listened to. It is it should be my door that is being knocked on to knocked on. It should not be me knocking on doors and having them close close it to me. This frustration I have encountered is symbolic of the of what's happening more broadly in Aboriginal communities. We are not being listened to. This, this electorate used their vote to say, Yingya is our voice. And they wanted me to 
continue with the message of Yorongo Rom Morongo, Yorongo Way Spurs, and push forward for treaty. This is the message that I bring today. Progress needs to be, sorry, progress needs to come faster, not by the foreign force of intervention and, and the stronger pictures which has occurred, which has caused great destruction and grief. Not by foreign force, sorry, I'll say that again, not by any foreign force since the back, back petition in the 60s, we have said, come negotiate with us. It is time for the government to be told, your rule books don't apply here. It is time for your more progress. Fix the constitution, negotiate with our leaders. It is time for federal treaty. Thank you.